All right, I, I'm back. I think I got um, the understanding. I was trying to use my camera stand. So um, I wanted to just discuss um, 2 Corinthians because um, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, God bless everybody. Um, may the peace of God be with you. I know emotions are high because there's so many changes going on, um, really mentally, physically, and spiritually. And a lot of people are not acknowledging or they are not aware that God, the universe, um, and Christ has actually made changes in the universe to bring changes in us. So that's where we are with 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, old things are become new. And so some of the challenges that we are facing is letting go of the old things and realizing that God has brought the new or even in the past that God has brought the new. So when God has brought the new, what happens is um, um, sometimes our consciousness has not awakened to the fact that new has come. And that is because our perception is still thwarted on um, the fact that we see things from the old nature. So whenever something new is coming into being, it has to be a part of who we are. Our perception has to play a part of it, which means that in order for new things to come, we have to change. And um, anybody that works with me or that I teach with on spiritual things um, knows that I teach from within. You'll always hear me saying that because the Bible was never written for external reasons. It was for the manifestations of internal um, um, uh, beingness to come to pass through a person and then manifest outside. So um, being that we're in this world and not of it, we discover that we don't do the same things uh, uh, as the world. That means that we don't even practice living like the world. However, when we look at ourselves, we may find some areas where we are practicing as the world. And this is when we begin to actually, um, um, when we begin to actually look at um, how we're perceiving God. Or if God is an external God, or if, is God an internal God? So um, your perception of God is how your life is going to play out. So let's look at God externally. God externally becomes a God of desires for materiality or um, um, sensation. Because material is outside of us and sensation is outside of us. It is not inside of us. So sensation is when I need to be touched or held by somebody and there's nothing wrong with that. But there's a sensation there. And there's some people in times of life where they're not going to be able to be held and touched by others because God wants them to understand his touch. So that's a little bit deep. I just want to go into... Um, the understanding of old things passing away. See, if you're a person that God called to do great things or be in high places and you may have been born in a low place, you got to let the low place go. From my point of view, I can know because I was born in um, a situation where there was lack. Um, God has propelled me to, you know, create or find wisdom for my situations. But the main point is, is if that I didn't see the wisdom that God was giving me, then I would still be in the old man situation. Now, in, in, in your life, as you grow, you're always going to evolve from one level to the next level, which is where the Bible tells us from level to level and glory to glory. The glory is understanding that I overcame a situation of my past and now I'm elevated into a new level. As long as we're in this earth, we're always going to have trials and tribulations. But those trials and tribulations actually catapult us if we see them right so from the eyes of God. They catapult us into the place that we need to be in life. So take the scripture. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have uh, become new, but you have to behold, behold that there is a need to change something within our lives. Behold, 
Behold that there is something within me and it's not about everyone outside of me. Behold, I mirror images of things that I don't like and I bring those people to me or those things to me and behold, I still live in the past or behold, all things have become new because I see now that it was my thinking that kept people in things that were not serving me properly or in the way of God coming to me. So when I, I look at behold, behold, all things are new. They have become new because now my mind has become renewed in Christ and I don't, I don't think like I used to. I don't think that um, people don't like me just because they don't want to like me. I don't think that people feel some way or that way. I don't, I don't think, I don't care about that anymore because that was a holdup for me. What people said, what they talked about, knowing that they talked about Jesus, we know they're going to talk about us. So behold, what difference does it make if they talked about you? If you allow that to keep you from evolving in life or going to where God has called you to, then you're stuck in the past. So behold, God says, all things have become new, but the new cannot come without a practice of the renewed mind. When you go to first Corinthians, no, I'm not first Corinthians. When you go to um, Romans 12, he said that you have to renew your mind, put your body on the altar because that's where transformation is. But if there's no transformation of your mind, your heart and your soul, you're going to keep battling with the same issues. They this, they that. They don't like me. I couldn't get that job. I, I'm just the worst person in the world. And this is self-talk. If you don't put self-talk that is negative away, then the past will always be with you because negative self-talk is in the past. God is doing a new thing. Behold, he said, the truth will set you free. Now, what is your truth? Your truth should be that I am created in the image of God. Therefore, I am worthy that I was formed in my mother's belly and God knew me before um, the beginning of time, that God loves me, God is pleased with me because I act according to the word of God. So when we go back um, to the scripture, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, get that in your soul. It's not just reading the scripture, but it is becoming one with the scripture. That's where Jesus was saying that, you know, the miracles with the wine, the wine uh, the water was changed to wine because of the miracle within an individual. No more negative thinking, water. Now you have become wine. You have sweet words for people to taste. You see? And that's what it was all about because in the beginning God created, but he created within man. You know, um, the word um, became flesh and walked amongst us. It will not walk within us, which is what it's really saying. It walked amongst us, not outside of us because God is within. It walked within us. People around us become contagious or touch with the word of God and they transform because we transform. But the thing that we have to grab a hold of, God lives within and the word walked amongst us and it became flesh. We have planted, people have planted seeds in us, pastors. That word wants to come up and become one with us. And that's where your transformation is for the, the new to come. Behold, all things become new because I am transformed from within out. I am not the same person that I, I don't handle situations the same. Amen. And um, I, I may have had a little bit of um, um, time in between because it says something about a, a connection but my, my point is that I want to get over to everyone is that you can repeat scripture after scripture if you don't let that scripture become one with you the newness of Christ cannot birth in you the newness of Christ is in the place of meditating on the word and letting the word conform you become one with the word that's where the change is a lot of people are going through hardships we know but the hardship is only there because you have the answer to the hardship. There is nothing that God ever gave us that we cannot overcome. We can overcome it, but we got to put our mind to overcoming that thing. And it's not becoming obsessed with whatever it is. If it's, you know, you got debt, if it's relationships, um, if it's, um, 
uh, family, if it's children, if you know you need a home, you're homeless, if you need a job, there's nothing too hard for God. The hard press comes in where we are not listening to God. So this is where our challenge is. So um, look at 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 and meditate on old things, what you need to put away, what things make you feel disheartened, what things do you know you need to release and God has been telling you or prompting you to. Behold, all things become new. All things will become new when we let go of the old. So in my women's empowerment group, I wrote to them today, um, because most mornings I'll write, you know, I keep my mind stayed on God because that's where my help is challenges there are many but i am determined to overcome by the blood and i there's no way we're going to overcome if we don't put our mind to it keep in step with the word all right so i wrote to them about corinthians but i began to tell them after old things have become new visualize an upgraded improved version of yourself that new you has resolved to let go of the old version of you. So that means the old version of you, how you used to respond to people, how you used to think about people is no more. You put more love in it, you took hate out of it. That new you has resolved to let go of old things, the old version of you, how you spoke to people, how you didn't speak to people, you know, how you did your budgeting, all of that, you know, where you lived. You thought, now I want to bigger house. I want a new house. I want a house. I want to own. You're thinking new things that you didn't think before. So while you're thinking on this, be honest and perceiving the things of life you hope for with the purest intention. It has to be a pure intention. You got to believe in your heart because this is where Christ is. Christ is in the heart of man. He resolves the issues, but we have to let go of the doubt, the worry, the disbelief that we can actually have because a lot of Christians go to church every Sunday and they don't really believe what they're praying and saying in the church. They go because it's a tradition. And Jesus was not about traditions. We really have to get to understand Jesus and his way. So if you need any prayer, we do prayer every Sunday. We have Bible study um, online. Uh, People from all over uh, the United States come on. Um, You're invited to come in. You can email me at kim.warner27 at gmail.com. We're in a season of upgrade. You can message me on Facebook. We're in a season of upgrade. I thought about Beyonce. I don't listen to that music. But I remember something one of the kids was saying, um, uh, upgrade, uh, upgrade. Anyway, I got up this morning and, and God was saying to me, Kim, it's an upgrade on your energy. You changed. Kim, you're not dealing with the same situations you used to because you're not the same person. See, it's not that people have been doing anything to us, but it's what we allow. And then the other thing is, it is, you know, what we believe in ourselves. Some people are out there, they have low confidence. Their self-esteem is low. They don't know how to feel about anything because they've been feeling about life the way that people taught them, the environment has told them. But the old things have to pass away in order for us to walk into the new. Listen, we got generations of children. You know, we got grandkids. Uh, We got people in our communities that need help. It's real talk now. Over the past 10 years, so many uh, black young men, and this is not a prejudice thing, it's looking at things face value. Even in the communities, old things have to pass away. See, we're worthy. And this is it. You stand up, you begin to talk about things, not in a, a condescending way or argumentative way, but state your claim. God made you whole. Therefore, you have a voice, we have a voice, and all the things that pass away because a lot of people have things to say, but they won't say them because they are worried about what other people are going to say. I don't care what people say. You know, I stand for the righteousness of Christ, and the righteousness of Christ is simply love. Love all. It's not about one color. It's about all colors. But there is some situations in our communities when we go outside of our homes, outside of ourselves, and we're looking at the upgrade. We're upgrading ourselves and letting old things pass away for new to come so that we can help in our communities, cities, and states. We need people in the, uh, uh, in, in the White House, congressmen. We need people that actually have a heart for Christ. All right? So I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm getting a... Uh, kind of really caught up in this, but I I feel what I'm saying because people have been so displaced and 
they're confused right now with what's going on. And God is actually saying, just pray, meditate on my word. I'm calling y'all in. That's what all of this havoc is about. I'm calling you all in. You're safe when you pray. You're safe when you pray because the more you pray, the more power you get. It's what God says. The more you pray, the more power you get. So you pray. Don't think that your prayers are unanswered or that God doesn't hear you because God is one with you. So God has to hear your prayers. Amen. Okay. So again, we're thinking on 2 Corinthians um, old things have passed away and the new has come. And let me just tell you where I am because I'm in Las Vegas and there's people that need mental health. And so I'm a program director over um, Renewed Mind and um, we help with depression, bipolar. We also have a um, methadone clinic. Um, we treat drug addictions, um, nothing to feel ashamed about. And we have three locations. The location that I'm at today is 1311 uh, Maryland Parkway. So that's Las Vegas, Nevada. And um, yes, you know, when I do groups, I talk about God because what I find it in my groups is um, that people are longing for God, even when you've been in compulsive behaviors, depression. And, you know, I told some people yesterday I, 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 I had depression and I didn't even know it when I was younger. But that depression led me into some understanding of what my work is. So, you know, I come together with people and I encourage them. I lift them up. Why? Because the glory of God is what dissipated depression. I never took medication. I never took drugs. You know, I tried some things like everybody else possibly. But I never became addicted because there was a part of me uh, that God within me that just wanted me to get the experience of life so that I could help people that were down and out because in most cases people that have mental health or drug addictions they become homeless and we have an issue with homelessness right now so i go back to um second corinthians again and see that's what you do when you're changing your life you keep on mulling over the word you keep on looking at that word you keep that word before you and it says again old things are passed away my old thoughts, my old consciousness is gone because the reward is in Christ. Now, when my Christ consciousness comes, then I think on new things I perceive. And it's not a hard thing because as you work that word, you keep on using the word of God. What happens is God is coming through because you're birthing something. You can't plant something and get an immediate reaction. Everything that you plant, it has to die. When you plant a seed, it goes into the ground. You put dirt on it, it dies. And then the rebirthing comes. And it's the same with us. We die, we pass away in spiritual things, and we evolve, and we become new. We awaken to new. We're rebirthed. Amen? So email me and um, inbox me. Uh, we do. Again, we have a women's empowerment group that... Um, we meet every Sunday on a conference call. You're welcome to come on, and we're going to be doing some conferences next year. So I thank you for coming on. I pray you guys have a blessed day. Um, let go of the old. That's the prayer. And accept. Accept the new. All right? Blessings, and I love you guys. Bye-bye.